Some neighborhoods of Ottawa have been plagued by severe problems. The people living in these neighborhoods felt helpless and isolated, hostages in their own homes. This was the case for people living in the Banff, Russell Heights, and Confederation Court neighborhoods. But the residents living here fought hard to change things. Today, in 2009, they stand as a model for community change and neighborhood restoration. These people have a lot to cheer about. They have come a long way. This amazing story of transformation begins with the community of Ledbury Banff in 2004. The Banff neighborhood was once home to a hardcore street gang, the Ledbury Banff Crips. It was not just gangs and fear. We couldn't organize the tenant association. We couldn't come to the community house. Women were feared, threatened by their children not to go to community house because they feared snitching on them. Young kids were forced by youth to do drugs. It was really unsafe. People were putting application to move out of here. I experienced that uh, one day I went out riding with, uh, with my bicycle officers. And as I was, as I was riding through the community, uh, children and mothers uh, were, you know, the kids were running back into the house and saying the police are here, the police are here, and they wouldn't speak to us. And that came, you know, it was evident that the, they didn't, uh, there was a mistrust there and the only, they only saw the police as the bad guys coming in to arrest people because historically we would go in, do a, a warrant or an arrest warrant or a drug warrant and we'd, uh, we'd leave the community and uh, that, that would be it. So that's how they saw us as the bad people coming in. This is when a community development initiative was introduced called No Community Left Behind, NCLB. The No Community Left Behind is actually a strategy development process for action vis-a-vis -vis community development. It brings community members together with the service providers for, for exploring opportunities for new ways of working and, and building uh, healthier and stronger communities. The Southeast Ottawa Community Health Centre brought together a steering committee made up mainly of members from service providers, funders and youth service agencies. So the objective of the steering table was to provide guidance for integrating isolated initiative and maximizing the return on investment and giving community an opportunity to come up with their community action plans for support to the steering table. I think what's really important also is, is the coordination of the steering committee. Uh, we had a, 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 an individual uh, that led our group and that was coordinating uh, all the meetings and getting people together, that is key and, and it's not only the coordination but the type of individual. Uh, they have to have energy, they have to show leadership and commitment and we had that in, in Abidjan. The great things about working through and with the NCLB process is that it gives people an opportunity to step outside of their own agency's work and look at how we can work better together and how we can do things in a way uh, that is more productive for the community and not necessarily just what we're, we're about as an organization. It gives us a chance to work together in ways that we might have not worked together before and to break down the silos of each of our particular agency's mandates. Once the steering committee was in place, cooperation between the agencies and key members of the community resulted in the formation of community groups such as tenants associations and youth councils. People residing in those neighbourhoods were contacted very early on and were asked to engage, were asked to participate. Their opinions were requested through uh, a survey that initially happened. People were going door to door and talking about No Community Left Behind and asking neighbours, neighbors, what is really important for you? What are your concerns? What is troubling you? what is troubling you and your families as you live in these neighbourhoods. And all of that part of a needs assessment that was used as the basis for all of the work that was to come after. The hard work of these community groups transformed the neighbourhoods. A large piece of this success story is the participation of youth in community development and image building. So, I'd like to thank them for all their amazing work. The amazing work done by the Russell Heights and Confederation Court Youth Councils earned both these neighbourhoods brand new play structures. 
The NCLB approach has resulted in an increase of community participation which, in turn, has led to the establishment of community forums and youth councils which are meeting regularly, making community outreach fruitful, building bridges and establishing trust with various agencies, giving feedback and getting information, generating knowledge and skills, and increasing community capacity to enact change. One of the key indicators of a healthy neighborhood is the feeling of safety. When community surveys were conducted in Banff, the feeling of safety went up from 51% to 80% in three years. In Confederation Court, it went from 29% to 63% in only two years. These changes are directly linked to a place-based approach bringing together the people and the services. If you look at the entire NCLB process, you can see that it's an interdisciplinary process that is giving pro service providers an opportunity to work together in a more efficient way, to make the right intervention at the right time and in the right place, and also give us a chance to use our own resources more efficiently. The question is, how can all this be possible in diverse neighborhoods? Abid John, the Community Development Framework Coordinator, does not think this is rocket science. We know that none of our communities are from us. If one community can do it, all the others can as well. All that we need is just the right tools, consistency, and, and patience to achieve the key milestones. And the milestones are engaging communities in neighborhood assessment, ensuring residents' participation in asset mapping, local level action planning, implementation and evaluation. I think tenant association is the key. Every year we participate in annual community surveys and planning meetings. We identify our needs and think of possible solutions. We set targets for ourselves and review our progress. We never failed in achieving what we set to achieve. Of course, the job is not without its challenges. Implementation of this process depends on existing conditions in a community. The first year of putting this process in place is always challenging. It needs lots of legwork on part of the community staff, and it needs lots of effort in bringing community members and service providers together on the same page. In the beginning, it's very, very difficult and hard. Community members didn't see the benefit of uh, coming and uh, participating. So that when they saw the uh, commitment of part of the CH police and others, uh, they saw the change, so more and more people came forward and joined the community. Uh, tell us about your experience with the Tenants Association. Is it always smooth sailing or...? No, of course not. Everybody, we all have problems, different personalities are going to clash and some of us don't know each other, so whatever. No matter, in life there's problems, right? So we try and deal with it. And normally we do get it dealt with, so yeah, if so we say things up front right away, then it's dealt with right away. Bringing together all of these components means no one is reinventing the wheel. Everything that makes up this form of community engagement is taking place already, in some form or another, in the communities and service agencies. I think it's putting the elements together and that gives the service provider an opportunity mm -hmm. to look at the bigger picture mm -hmm. and then to work at where they can make the difference. To measure the progress it's important to do a snapshot of the community at regular intervals. Mm -hmm. It helps us stay connected to all the resources that are available to service providers like uh, city councillors or Ottawa Community Health Centers, doctors, nurses, and um, this way we can talk to them anytime without being in a serious need or a crisis. The place-based planning process aims to be all-inclusive and looks at each community as unique. Specific concerns are dealt with appropriately using creative approaches. The result? Achieving desired outcomes. For instance, in a community where, only a few years ago, residents were living in isolation, today those same residents marched in the streets to celebrate their success in joining hands for community building. 
What we just saw was the reason why United Way is so supportive of the No Communities Left Behind model. And in fact, one of the reasons why we were around the table at the very early stages. It's important for residents, for citizens, for donors, for business leaders, for community leaders to be involved in their community and know that they can actually have impact, that they can make a difference in their lives and the lives of other people. And the magic and the beauty of this model is that it allows residents to be involved, to feel that they can actually take control, that they can focus on their neighborhood, that they can build their own community in a way that's relevant and meaningful for them. The City of Ottawa has been instrumental in leading the way. By putting together a Community Development Framework, CDF, it has provided system-level support to communities by tailoring the NCLB strategy to address the unique needs of each neighborhood. This is another piece of the success story. The issue has always been that have our services truly been focused in the right areas in terms of establishing healthy communities? And we started thinking about how do we get our services to work better with the community? And one of the things that we discovered in um, Southeast Ottawa with, with the No Communities Left Behind model is that there was a, an incredible um, work being done in terms of bringing together community partners and city services. Um, and it was a real success story and we thought how can we help um, get our services in a much more systemic, strategic way working better with the community and what role could the City of Ottawa play in doing that. From our perspective we have two roles. I think we have a leadership role at the system level but we're a service provider first and foremost at the community level. Community engagement process takes time. In terms of challenges, the community mobilization is both the key to success and a main challenge as well. Each neighborhood is different. There is a need to identify the right tools and the right strategies to reach the key milestones. I think the NCLB process has helped the communities in a number of different ways. It helps the community members to get, get to know the support systems and resources that are available to them. It helps the frontline staff working in the community to get to know what the specific needs are at that given period. And I think it also helps to make intervention with partners and funders that much more useful because it is specific to the identified needs within the communities. Neighborhoods are dynamic and different, and it is exactly this premise upon which the NCLB's place-based approach is structured. The amazing thing that's happened and why I know it's successful is everyone now is talking about place-based approaches to service and that is a huge shift. There are a number of lessons that can be drawn from the NCLB experience. One of the uh, lessons learned is, is really the um, benefit of supporting communities through the process of um, doing community assessments, planning, implementing strategies and evaluation to support communities through that process so that they can identify the milestones and make adjustments and continue to be flexible to get to where they want to end up. I think the other lesson that we've learned is um, recognizing the benefit of coming at this building of capacity through collaboration, coordination, ensuring that we have created opportunities for communities to participate and share their, their wisdom and knowledge. This approach speaks to consistency, that people come around, support the neighborhood, really understand the neighborhood, and decide to stay to, together, to collaborate, and to work over the long term. What was really beneficial to us is that when, uh, when NCLB approached us, uh, there had been a lot of work done in building the community and getting them ready for change and recognizing that they wanted to, they wanted to see a change in their community. So we didn't traditionally, uh, you know, it's the police coming in to affect change. This was the community wanting the police to come in to affect change for the better. There's always the impetus somewhere in a community to begin and um, we need to find it and nurture it. You need to have officers that are, uh, that are dedicated, committed, and that have presence. So in building that relationship of trust, the community needs to know the officers and the officers need to know the community. This is a success story in the making. No community should be left behind. 
However, for the communities to become masters of their destinies, a great deal is expected of them in terms of shared responsibility. We just saw in the United States the election of a president whose message is all about shared responsibility. That it's not just governments, it's not funders, it's not others that have the solution, but the solution comes from us and that we know what it is and we have the responsibility and the ability to act on that. I remember one of his lines so vividly where he said, I can be the president that invests in early childhood education, but I can't be the president that turns off the television and assures my child does his homework. And that's stuck with me and I think it's so relevant when we're looking at place-based work, when we're looking at initiatives like No Communities Left Behind, because it really is up to residents to want to make a difference. We will be able to take pride in our community. We need to take pride in our community. Yeah. They may not know exactly how, they may not have the resources. That's where we as funders can come in to provide some assistance, but they have the desire and the willingness to try and work differently to make some kind of change, to make an identifiable difference in their community. And for turning this dream of shared responsibility into reality, the City of Ottawa and partner agencies have a plan. Well, the communities are the, are the key, and the City of Ottawa is very clear from our role that we are not owning this process at the community level. The community and the people that live in that community and the agencies in the community, they own the process, they own the solutions, they own the identification of the priorities. We're here to really help and support that. We're not going into a community and saying, oh, here we are, the big city of Ottawa, and we own this, and we're gonna tell you what to do. Our responsibility is once the community and those people that live there have identified what their priorities are, for us to go back to our organization and say, how can we make our services better to respond to that community? Not to tell them what we're going to do. They telling us what they need. And that's a significant difference from what I believe we were doing before and what we're doing now. And I think that's the system change that is the, the start of an incredible evolution in how the city is going to provide services. Working together is not easy, but its fruits are so satisfying to the spirit that once you enjoy them, you just don't give up. <laughs>